Salutations. Um, wanted to do something at Fast Blast that is something different and give some props where it was due. Okay, we're going to talk about UFOs and cemeteries or UFOs, extraterrestrials, and graveyards. And this comes directly from the work uh, that really turned me that turned me on to it that I caught is Preston Dennett. I want to make sure he gets plenty of credit for this, all right? He's a very, very great researcher. Uh, the gentleman took, like, a while, a few months ago, uh, he took, like, you know, over an hour of his time to talk to me. Uh, it was wonderful. Um, well, let me rephrase that, actually. <laughs> I nervously talked. He patiently listened. He's a very cool cat. But as far as research, he has some of the best material that is so far that it's not, uh, it's groundbreaking in terms of it's not cut cookie cutter that we see so much of, right? So, man, um, UFO Healings. This will be the first book. I got this book in 1996. It was life-changing for me in terms of it had contact experiences somewhat similar to what I was going through, all right? So this is the first book he had that, uh, that I read anyway that really kind of changed my life. I really resonated with it. Here's another book of his, and I'll put these up to UFO Healings, the second volume. That's a good one. And here's uh, Schoolyard Encounters. Just a little bit of his material, so I'll put the link up to him. Definitely just want people to check him out. He should have much more subscribers than he does. Seems like <clears throat> real information like that, someone gets muffled out and drowned. So anyway, quickly talking about UFOs and cemeteries. The way I want to kind of connect this. He did a video on it, and it leads to a couple of researchers. You can check in from there and kind of see what they're talking about. Uh, this is interesting in terms of the, what's been proposed. Is Some are saying that maybe that the reason why you're seeing these UFOs hovering around graveyards normally see emitting lights, shining lights down, is, and I find that interesting in that maybe your first year people saying that they're implants, they could be retrieving implants from people. That's a possibility. I would think they would have an easier way of getting the components than that though if they're getting implants. Um, secondly, are they doing almost necromancy? Are they doing genetic harvesting? You know that our genetics are still active and harvestable after our death to a certain degree. I think our science is showing that now, let alone if you've got civilization that's, you know, hundreds, thousands of years ahead of us, what they can harvest in that way. Or um, what I think it's also a concern too, all right? And this is going into the work I've been doing with earthbound spirits. I talked about that on Patreon a little bit. I don't talk about that publicly a lot, all right? And helping spirits cross over and how I actually do that, but something that's so prevalent right now and I think it's really understated in terms of you've got people don't go into light don't do that and things that will keep earthbound spirits here and people just like you know you and I that don't cross over because of the shock of death and other things so a lot of the experiences that I've been with concerning extraterrestrials was them trying to also make you remember awakening your soul life memories so you'll have a memory of who you are what you are how you've incarnated past lives these things. So are they dealing also at the grave site with earthbound spirits? Are these some of the higher beings, some of them that are not earthbound, that are not uh, corporeal? Is that a way they're using the body, using the electro impulses and things to attract the spirit of an earthbound spirit back to the body so then they can maybe wake them up or show them more of a star family thing? Hey, this is just uh, I mean, I'm just putting this in as hypothesis. I don't know for sure, but it's a definite possibility. And I say that based on the amount of earthbound spirits that do not cross over and remain here and have time to, that are doing nothing but interacting with the energy fields of people. So that, you know, change, which creates personality changes and mental health problems a lot of times in the person that's the victim of uh, such a quote unquote possession. You're supposed to call them attachments, but when you have bad effects on the person's life, I think that's more of a possession. Anyway, not to go too far into that. Um, concerning back to UFOs and cemeteries, I think that could be something that we're dealing with also. And also to take this to the fact that we have a lot of these beings on board these crafts that are non-corporeal. They're, they're thought forms. Even some of the craft that are lower vibration, I believe. So we know that if you looked at like the you look at the work of Linda Moulton Howe, they talk about these clone bodies. And I've heard that from other contactees also have these, some of these bodies, these beings don't have corporeal bodies. Like some of the beings I saw, I've shown you several different craft that have uh, beings on there that are not corporeal, plasma configurations, light, things like that. 
So we've got the lower vibrational ones that need perhaps the genetic material to create these clone bodies to harvest their, uh, put to place their consciousness in so they can walk down here amongst us. That's another one that could be a very big possibility of what's being done. It could be all of these things put together. Either way, I think this is just food for thought, definitely, to kind of put your thought in that way. And check out Preston's stuff. He also did something on UFO and crystal mines. I'll probably do another video, or uh, UFOs and mines. That's also connected to something that my own personal experience is concerning the quasi-crystals and something I know of that and ship construction. I think that's entwined. So I kind of did something on crystal cross quasi-crystal lithography about that. Anyway, um, quickly, uh, wrapping this up. That, uh, that's, that's, that's just things to pawn, it, to pawn there. Check into it yourself and do the research. See, uh, you know, what you think, what your connections are. Put some comments down here. I might release this one to YouTube probably, so put some comments down there and just communicate with each other what you think it might be. I'm not saying I know it all, but these are three very good possibilities that I gave why we might be seeing UFOs around these grave sites, around these cemeteries, or why so often now you have extraterrestrials being reported also in cemeteries. Just something to think of, food to thought. For food for thought, please uh, subscribe, hit that bell so that you get a notification when I put something out. And thank you to people on Patreon, and peace out.